Yo. Welcome guys, this is Cecil bringing to you audio number 301. I welcome you to a very exciting game in between Spirit Moon and Zakard. Very uh, highly loved and respected Night Elf player, savior to many I dare say, as well as Zakard. Same thing goes with him, but for those orc fellows out there. Let's get this replay pause at the 15 second mark and we can get this underway. A lot to discuss on this game, so I hope you're ready to get this started. If you're not, hey, that's what the pause button's for, but I'm for the people who know the breakdown here, come on. So I assume you're paused at that mark. So let's get this unpaused in three, two, one, unpause. Yeah, we're starting off really quick now, because I know this is going to be a long audio, so I'm not going to, well, I'm going to try at least to not waste as much time. <laughs> time as I did in the last one. So anyways, I would recommend just either putting it, put Fog of War on this time, and let's put it on to one of the observers, so that way you can get a uh, handy dandy view of what's going on, but also at the same time, it's not going to be so map hack-ish, if you get my drift here. Anyways, nothing I can really say too much in the beginning of the game. There's always nothing to say in the beginning, and it's an awkward moment where I'm just like, oh god, I gotta think of something, and it's so funny, because you listen to the other guys, and they do the same thing too, so it's it's an audio commentator thing. We always have the little awkward beginning, but that, here's the good part, this is when they get the heroes. Demon Hunter for Spirit Moon for this matchup, and the Blade Master for Zakard on this matchup. See, that was a little bit better. <laughs> Oh, the barracks and ancient of war nearing completion ah oh, I know it's it's miserable <laughs> anyways base construction what do we have going down here spirit moon is make is obviously expecting a blade master as any good idol should expect on this map very rare that you're gonna see the far seer going down because we all know by this point that moon the inventor of this strategy is probably going to go with this strategy on this map, as well as orcs always getting Blade Master to counter that very well known and <laughs> very well expected strategy. So you gotta protect your wisps. Protect them like they're your own nuts here. You wanna protect your nuts? Treat them like wisps. Protect your wisps. If you don't treat your wisps like your nuts, wow, you just lost your nuts. You get all that? Point is, protect your wisps. Got the Demon Hunter trying to chase that peon, but yeah, Zakard's a little smart here. He's gonna drag him onto the mercenary camp. Creeps. That's not gonna happen. He's not gonna kill that peon. Food for the creeps. Food for the creeps, indeed. Alright, so the Blade Master, he's got a lot of wisps protected there. He's enjoying it. So he's probably not really going to be able to kill. I would say he'd only get a good shot at one wisp, which. Perhaps he's going for, if he doesn't go for the Wisp, he's going to go for the Archer. He sees the Wisp. Wisp is down. Not really. Because it gets healed by that Moonwell. It gets healed right when I think it had, I think, about two hit points. Very nice heal. And that was a heal where he uses the Moonwell and hits R for the hotkey to get right to it. Because that does go closer. However, there are disadvantages to selecting the Moonwell and then hitting R to the unit. For example, I had a Priestess of the Moon one time, channeling Starfall on my base, and this is like the last ditch effort. She was getting a little weak, so you know, I wanted the Moonwell to heal her up. I hit R and hit the thing. What it does is it forces that unit to do the move command towards the Moonwell. <laughs> screwed up my plans and, you know, I got screwed really badly that game. I mean, wow. Anyways, back to this game. Spirit Moon's going to do a very wise move right here. He's going to do something that saves him a lot of trouble, and he just did it now. He ganked that Boots of Speed right from the shop. He did see that Zakard was creeping, and it did give him a brief opportunity, and I think that was just as the Boots became available. So he had very, very nice timing there while he kept all of his units at the bottom, trying to worry about the Shadow Melded Archers. Now, I'm not sure why he didn't get a Dust of Appearance that might have saved him a little bit of trouble. After all, he does have a Blade Master, and you just might as well need that dust later on to the game for any situation you can imagine. But, he is actually doing an excellent job 
against Zakard. Zakard is just kind of pent up in his base. Moon's got a good hold on the map right now, and that's a typical Night Elf thing to do in the beginning of this game. You gotta keep as much control as you can, because this is the weakest time that you're gonna be out there. The Orc probably won't be able to hit you until he has, I would say, one or two Raiders with Ensnare. And you're gonna see exactly why that is so. And actually, Zakard is going to do that exact plan. So, there goes the Blade Master. The Blade Master did buy that Dust of Appearance. Uses his TP. Got him good. But, hey, he's an orc. He's got his healing selves. And hey, Moon, he's a night elf. He uh, gets his moon wells. So, just as he hits tier 2, look what he does. He goes right to his base. He just protects his base just for the duration that it takes to build his tier 2 as well as that very weak Ancient of Wonders. He's going to just send out a Beastmaster and an Archer just to kind of look about the midfield, just to make sure that, all right, if he's going to be around, I'm going to stall him just a little bit, because look at his base right now. He just started on his Tier 2. So, very weak and vulnerable moment for him right now. If I were him, I would have put a little wisp outside of where the uh, orange creeps are, not the, like, out by the mercs or around there, but look what he does. He does an excellent job at this little harassment. Instead of just sitting and doing nothing in his base, he actually does a very risky move, I would say, and you gotta really know your shit if you're doing this, but he did know his shit, by the way. He had that wisp out by the expansion, he saw him there, so with that he knew that he had the game in his grips, I mean the map, not the game but if I were him, I would think that I have this game. He knew what's going on. He saw that he was over there. That's a perfect opportunity. Because now, obviously, it's going to stunt the orc's growth here. He can't make anything outside of this beast year. He's going to have to wait two burrows until he can actually get his tier two, which really, really does Spirit Moon just an amazing, amazing advantage just by that simple act right there. 60 gold is what that Wisp cost. That Wisp, right there, could have just cost the card the game. Just that small little knowledge of where he is on the map can do you wonders. You're a Night Elf. Take advantage of the fact that you can mine wood anywhere you want on the map. And that that wood harvester only costs you 60 gold. And hell, it won't even give them experience if you know how to detonate the thing, right? So please, send out at least two scouts, if not three, and just put them in very, very good positions. As you can see, having them in those little outcrops close to expansions, for example. Outcrops next to your base if you're worried that the orc is a very offensive player and he's going to harass you. So, speaking of harassments, Spirit Moon is just going to set his way out with his Demon Hunter. His Demon Hunter is just going to pretty much hound his army, while the rest of Spirit Moon can, you know, just sort of composes himself while he just keeps the card on his toes here. Very common strategy. You see it a lot versus undead players as they're trying to creep up to their level when they can actually hit. So, this is a pretty interesting game because it, both of these players, this is kind of the eh, kind of the stage where they can't really do much. They have to wait for the combo. Both of them have combo armies here. So, but look what it's doing. Zakard. Yeah, he's uh, just working on his raiders. He just started construction of one. He's going to get his spirit lodge, which, in my opinion, does a great deal of help for Zakard. And you're going to see why in just a little bit. So, nothing much I can really mention to you. This is kind of the, the mid-game dull moment where you just kind of... Alright, he's just trying to reach tier 3. He's getting his stuff. Right now... If he didn't go for his base for those burrows, Zakard would have probably had about two raiders out at this point, possibly with ensnare, and it's at this point in the game where he would probably attack his base. And notice how Spirit Moon, he's got that set in his mind, but I don't know if he was just used to playing so many games, and he's used to getting the attack at this point in the game, or not, I don't know. But think about it though. This is a very weak point for the Night Elf player. 
there's there's two very weak points that you gotta realize that a night elf this is for you orc guys, so you better appreciate this. This is the thing that pisses me off the most when I do this strategy. So this is how you piss off a night elf. If he doesn't piss you off by hitting your burrows, which by the way, make sure you you know not gonna let that happen. <laughs> that point where you the night elf just hits tier two that's the perfect time to attack. See, he would have done this attack right here about 30 seconds ago. So this is when he, you know, he has two raiders with his snare. All right, he can actually do something now. Well, as you can tell, it's a little bit too late for Zakard to do that, and it gave Spirit Moon a little bit too much time to get a little bit of an advantage here. So right now, Zakard, he's like, ah, yeah, that definitely. Uh, Sex a fatty right there, because right now he's he's in trouble. He's got to wait for his spirit lodge to come up and get some spirit walkers, because now his army's getting tagged with fairy fire, and he's just got to play a little bit more careful now. Demon Hunter, once again, not really going to be helping with the creeps, but he is going to gank two healing scrolls from that shop. Very wise move from him. He had plenty of gold. Once you hit that tier 3, you do have a little bit that you're getting. Maybe if you miscalculated 100, maybe 200 gold when you're waiting to get that tier 3 hero or not. Who knows, but it's a great time to get those scrolls of healing. Because there's going to be about 2 scrolls in the shop at that time. Awesome time to get it. So, now with Zakard, completely devoid of healing scrolls right now. Spirit Moon's got a good... He's sitting pretty right now. He's pretty happy where uh, where he's at. He doesn't really... In I don't think he got sight of Zakar's base that he was getting the spirit lodge. Let me go to his vision. Ah, crap. It's bugged. It won't let me. It doesn't show anything on my screen. But I think he did see it. But notice that eh, he's expecting a little bit of an offensive tactic here. Zakar is very well aware that... If you let this Night Elf player get enough Druids of the Talon, he's going to be in some deep crap. But also, at the same time, Zakard has to give Moon the idea that, alright, I'm going to be very offensive. That, you know, the thing that I just said that the Orc typically is going to be thinking. He wants Moon to be thinking that, but when really he's just stalling the game just so he can get some of his Spirit Walkers out there to help counter these pesky ass. Bleh, pesky ass. Dots. That he has coming after him. So he's just making sure that Spirit Moon stays in his base while perhaps he can maybe get a few levels. He already has a level 3 Tarn Chieftain, so that's pretty nice. That Shockwave. Whew. I hate seeing that go off on that army. I mean, just look at his army. He's gonna just, just got a little tiny army, nothing too crazy. One thing that you might want to notice, however, is that expansion that Moon did get in a very risky spot. That's right in Zakard's little zone right there. That's usually his territory, so he's taking a big risk. But what that does for him, if Moon does a good job at keeping a hold on the map, because if you notice for like the last couple minutes, he's been kind of gliding in and out, kind of on, like, you know, just to the left of his base a little bit, while Zakard kind of stayed out there. But once he saw that opening, when Zakard was going to go out and try to creep, that was when he just goes right back to controlling this map. Back to the expansion. What that really does, well, obviously, not only it gives him an expansion, but it also gives him a new method of control. Once that he sees Zakard tries to kill that expansion, that gives a perfect right away for Moon to go march right back into Zagard's base, kill all of those burrows, because the army that he has right now, all that magic damage, the piercing damage, burrows will go down so quickly and so beautifully. But, well, it might not be beautiful for any orc listeners, because I would imagine you guys are just cringing at the thought, because I love doing that to my friend Shane, you know, newbie. Yeah. Whenever I mention that, I just like to see him cringe, and it just pisses him off. That's the perfect way to piss off an orc. Anyways, let's take a look at this game once again. 
So, he's going to go for a little bit of an attack there on his Tree of Eternity. Even though Spirit Moon is very close to him, he's going to take a stand. He's not going to let that tree go down.